is your showrunner, Mr. Jeremy Carver.
before we ask the next show question to follow, I just wanted to ask you about your first Comic Con. What's the experience been like, and, and what took you so long to get there? Yeah! Uh, generally, I've been uh, in Vancouver directing uh, when Comic Con is on, and they say, well, you can get from Vancouver to San Diego. And I said, oh, I'm not as young as I used to be, and the travel hasn't really hurt. But this year I didn't, and um, it was uh, a lot of uh, cajoling and I, I believe a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's been an eye opener, and uh, I don't know why it took me so long, but it's really quite something. And, um, very happy to be here. Happy to have you. Uh, and, and this is for uh, Jeremy and Bob. Over. Jeremy and Jensen, if you guys want to chime in too. Just last season, uh, Sam and Dean, they had, their, they had their troubles with each other, but they had that really nice moment in the finale. Uh, great, great brotherly bond. And just want to What's, what's their relationship going to be like in season nine? Like, where are they when we get back? Jeremy? <laughs> well, I mean, I'll just quickly say, you know, one, one of the uh, interesting things about the end of last season was that for the first time in a long time, uh, the brothers chose each other and their love for each other over what was sort of the season-long quest. They chose to leave the gates of hell open uh, in exchange for saving each other. and. Uh, that has left them stronger than, than, than ever, uh, but also has created a tremendous amount of uh, fallout for them to be dealing with, uh, particularly at the beginning of this season. Um, because uh, the brothers are, are, are walking into a world this year where all the normal sort of constructs of, of heaven and hell aren't the same anymore. Uh, the king of hell, uh, as you saw, is, is no longer in residence in hell. and. Heaven is not running as heaven normally ran, so um, uh, I keep on going back to the term free for all. Free for all. <laughs> free for all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, obviously, I think Jeremy and Bob know more than Jensen and myself do, but um, it, as to kind of piggyback on what Jeremy said, um, we did choose each other and keep fighting the fight together. Um, thankfully, we have fans that want us to keep fighting the fight. And before we pass over, thanks guys. Y'all are awesome. I, I don't even know. Y'all really kick ass. Um, and I don't think any of us thought we'd be up here in season nine um, with people still interested, so thank you. Um, but on that note, we'll keep on fighting the fight together, and then we see Sam and Dean kind of um, figuring out how to, in this free-for-all world, where we have the king of hell living in our dungeon, and angels walk all over the place, we're really going to need each other more than ever. Free-for-all. Uh, Misha.
what it's like to actually uh, eat and you know and what happens with the food after after you <laughs> eat it. Um, there's a great bathroom scene. There's a <laughs> really really great bathroom scene. Uh, it's a three episode arc. Of <laughs> you know you're an adult and you're really you're you're actually flushing the toilet for the first time. That's got to be a, an epiphany. Um, <laughs> So yes, there's a, there's a lot of good, good stuff like that. Bathroom, bathroom related stuff, I guess. <laughs> Mark, what? Well, I am Christian. Well, sure. Um, that scene in the finale where Crowley had that breakdown. Did you cry? I did. It was pretty intense. But I don't trust Crowley. You know what I'm I trust you, but I don't trust Crowley. How, how sincere was that? Should we interpret that as a genuine breakdown, or was he just tooling with the boys? Don't, don't answer that. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, Bob, you want to take that one? He, he could tell you, but he, I'd have to kill him. Okay. <laughs> I think... I think the fun. I think the the fun part for me is that whatever happened to Crowley at the end of season eight um, has had a profound effect on him, whether he likes it or not. I think that's the best way of putting it. And uh, uh, hopefully, we'll go on a little journey to find out what kind of effect that might have had. Is that a good way to put it? Well done. Um, it's also a treasure trove of, of information. There's rooms in the middle of levels we haven't explored yet. Um, it's a springboard for stories. Uh, but interestingly, I think that the middle letters for Dean is uh, a home he's made. His he's got a memory foam mattress. He's hanging posters. Sam is a workplace and doesn't think of it as home, but is very much uh, comfortable in the academic pursuits that one can uh, follow in the minor letters, and that's something that we'll be exploring even more fully this season. There's a disco room too, right? There's a disco room too. There's a, there's a mirror ball. Uh, and speaking of Twitter, uh, recently, um, Jim Beaver tweeted that he's coming back. As an actress or something? What is it? Is it some actress he's coming back as? <laughs> so I'm wondering if there's anything you can tell us when that might happen or anything at all. Uh, I think Jim also tweeted that he was coming back in a way that you wouldn't guess or wouldn't expect, and uh, that's pretty much how I would leave it. <laughs> Because I'm a bad An inside story of that is though, Jim tweets those things before we actually have any plans to bring him back. And then to me, I'm bring him back because it's out there in the ether, so but we'll figure something out. Um, and speaking of coming back, um, Charlie Bradbury is a very popular guy. And uh, everyone loves Felicia Day. Is there a chance we might see her again this season? I'm not sure how these guys feel about it, but I know when I'm directing um, and they're doing scenes with Felicia, I, I, I don't get the sense that she's really given you very much. Ooh. And as a director, you're constantly waiting for her to get out of the makeup trailer. She gets on stage, she doesn't really know her lines. She's um, made everybody who can't look her in the eyes. <laughs> Thank you, Bob.
So yeah, what was the question? That's great. Okay, thanks. <laughs> and, and Karen. And, 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 and pie? Yeah. Ah! And Karen, on the flip side, what keeps Sam going when, I mean, they had that great moment at the end of the season, but he's, he definitely felt the weight of his brother's expectations this past season. So what keeps him going? Um, I think, well, I think it's probably a two-part answer because there's what the writers write for me and what they have keeps him going. And Jared as an actor, what I try to bring to Sam and to the amazing words that are in front of me on the page. Um, I try to make Sam, he always tries to fight, he tries to fight good fight, he really tries to do what he thinks is right. Um, and we always play with this, the road to hell is paved with good intentions kind of quote. Um, and so sometimes he kind of errs, but that's the beauty of this show. I talk about what Felicia said, these guys aren't really defined by their actions or their interests, they're trying to do the right thing, they're trying to mirror reality, and you just... No one has all the answers, so Sam's trying to do what he can do. Sometimes he messes up, and Dean picks him up, or Charlie picks him up, or Misha, Mark pushes him down. <laughs> so Sam's just trying to do what he thinks is right. I think he's accepted that his life's not going to be normal. Um, so he's trying to make a more better place. Okay, um, we're going to start taking some audience questions in a minute. Uh, or, so if you want to start lining up. Um, but uh, on Twitter, the favorite question I got was, um, now that Kaz is human, is he gonna get to learn how to drive the Impala? Nope. <laughs> He's just kidding, of course he is. <laughs> no. He will, he will. <laughs> It'll happen. <laughs> All right. right 
me to do currently? Maybe in a couple seasons, I'll, I'll kind of <laughs> usually. Between visiting family and spending time with each other, and now we got a little kiddo. So, inevitably, I, I fly back to Vancouver at the last possible second so I can just kind of maximize my time. And so, I'm not yet willing to give away an extra two weeks to come up and, and be uh, working just yet. Misha? I, uh, I have two very small children as well, and they. Uh, they keep me up at night, so I'm looking forward to an opportunity to spend some time away from them on the Correcting and getting some sleep. Uh, so I'm actually, uh, I think uh, I'm planning to direct an episode, episode number 17, or should I say 917, um, this year. Yeah, I know, man. So, it's hard for us. 
<laughs> we need somebody who knows the show well up here, unfortunately. Uh, thank you. We're having, everybody's explaining to us that it's actually the Antichrist character that who he was talking about. Um, that's a good question. I've actually thought about that myself. Are we going to cool, cool play with? It's a, it's a wonderful character to play with, and, you know, uh, and I don't think you're going to see that character in, uh, in early one of episodes here, and beyond that, I, I couldn't really say anymore, but it's, uh, I mean, anytime we introduce uh, a really fun, fun, um, uh, <laughs> a great character, we all, we're always looking for a way to bring uh, him or her back, so, uh, you can rest assured that um, uh, no character goes forgotten for too long. So we'll bring it back just to kill it and bring it back again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, this question is for Jared. The mm -hmm. season 8 finale scene about always letting Dean down was amazing. You were amazing. Thank you. I just wanted to know a little bit about how that and where you pulled all that inner angst from, because you seem to be a pretty happy guy. <laughs> uh, I am a pretty happy guy. That was, you know, I'm not method kind of back. First off, thank you. Um, and all the fans are so kind on Twitter uh, about that episode. Uh, that was a really fun, the way it was scheduled, it was me and Shepard in that church for, was it two days or three days or something? Three days. Um, and so there really was a progression it's nice that sometimes when you're shooting so often, it's like, oh, we're gonna film the last scene of the show, and then an hour later we're filming, like, skipping around town, so it's really difficult to kind of build up that way. And I was saying, I'm not a method actor by any means, but I kind of, and Jen's will vouch for me, I kind of, it kind of took over me for some reason. Uh, no, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I was even, I, I mean, even Jensen came up, he's like, man, you know, um, chill out. Chill out. <laughs> Essentially, because it really, I, I really kind of, it was such great material that I really wanted to sink my teeth into it. And it kind of took over. And so for several days, um, A, I think all the angst just came from having to be on set with Shepard, you know? <laughs> just came to do my great job. I mean, we, it was so fun to sit there. And I've had this chance with Jensen a lot to go play off another actor that I really respect. But to be there with Shepard also, and he brought so much to his credit. I mean, uh, he did a great job. And, um, I'm not gonna lie, I was impressed. I was like, I didn't think he could act. Uh, uh, but no, so to have the material and then another actor who's just doing an amazing freaking job. Uh, it just really, I don't know where it came from, but I think the material brings it out. That sounds cheesy, but if you're, when you're reading something and kind of really getting into it, your mind goes to that place. And it felt, it felt really good. And, just, and then obviously, Jensen and I have, have worked together like that for years and years and years. And so when it kind of apexed like that, it just happened. It was really awesome. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You probably deal with that more than, than I do. I, I, Dean tends to stay Dean no matter where he, what situation he's in. He, he generally is just angry. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, like, you know, back several seasons ago in the French Mistake, I remember when they called and said, they, they kind of, this did, one and only time we've gotten brought into a conceptualized meeting uh, about, a, about a story, and they just kind of wanted to, to hear what we thought of using our real personnel or our real names and this and that. And I said, as long as Dean never deviates from Dean, then Dean, yeah. you can put us anywhere you want. Um, as long as you make Jared Jensen huge douches and Sam and Dean say the same. So, you know, I, I think Jared deals with that with Sam a lot more. Um, you know, the, the, the altering of the character, um, and you know, he does a, he does a really good job on it, I think, and, uh, and he, they, they keep throwing him curveballs, and he, he keeps pulling him to the fence.
friends. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of fortunate enough that I, that I just kind of stay the course. Uh, I, I have a good client. Um, yeah. I guess I am the one that's kind of the mission done with you. Um, it is it's really difficult, um, but it's really fun. Um, I still, my favorite is from changing, wait, no, what was it? Stay, where it was like Jared and Jensen playing Sam and Dean, yeah. playing, playing Jared and Jensen playing Sam and Dean. <laughs> so that was kind of the ultimate, like whoever gets to do that. I don't think there's ever been another show on, on Earth. Um, yeah, Jared just plays Sam Okay. Um, as far as like Soul of Sam and Lucifer Sam and uh, Evil Sam and like Dime Sam, there are lots of Sams. Um, and that's awesome, because otherwise it would just be the same thing kind of over and over. I can't think of, I'm so grateful that I get to do it. Thank you guys, because it's really it's so much fun. Do you like, it, it's like, it'd be just like, it'd be just like Clyde Dean. Yeah. <laughs> and I, no, I really, I really enjoy it. I think that that's it. Um, really part of why we're sitting up here right now, nine seasons in, um, because the show, you guys as writers are constantly taking risks and changing things up and making it dynamic and interesting, and it's not, we're not watching, the, we're never watching the same episode twice, and that's an amazing achievement after 173. Yeah, y'all never watch the same episode twice, right? You don't, don't no one watches it twice. Um, <laughs> No, but I mean, it's it's um, it's what keeps it interesting, not only um, uh, not only to watch, but also for us to be on. It's it, it's what makes it a fun place to come to work. Is that it, there's always something new to deal with. Thank you.